As we've been showing you, it has been a devastating week of flooding right across the country. It's left a lot of Canadians homeless still today. Our next guest is an architect who says instead of trying to control the flooding, we should be adapting houses to stand up to it. Elizabeth English is the founder of the Buoyant Foundation Project, and she joins us now to explain more. Good morning to you. Good morning. Elizabeth, you've developed what you call an amphibious home, a house that can withstand flooding like what we've been experiencing. Can you explain to us how it works? Um, well, it works kind of like having a floating dock underneath your house. So, but it's, uh, you can't see it most of the time. So when the flood comes, the um, house has buoyancy underneath it. And when the flood comes, the house will actually just float on top of the water uh, and go up as high as it needs to go uh, while the flood is there and then go straight back down uh, to its original position, because besides the buoyancy, it also has a vertical guidance system. So it's, they can't go anywhere except straight up and down. We're sharing with our viewers this morning uh, the graphic of, of how it works. It's fascinating. Can an existing home be turned into an amphibious home? And how much does something like this cost? Um, it depends on the type of home. It's not a one-size-fits-all. So. It's not so good for houses um, uh, with uh, most of the houses in Canada, it won't be per particularly good for uh, because they have basements. Um, mm -hmm. But the houses, uh, cottages or houses that have what we call pier and beam construction, houses with a crawl space, it's perfect for those. And for those houses, it's really quite inexpensive. You can uh, make a uh, house with a basement amphibious, but it's just a lot more expensive. Yeah, I was wondering about that concept. Some of the places where you use this project have been places like Jamaica and Nicaragua, and of course, post Hurricane Katrina, you did a lot of work there. Uh, if you were to use one here in Canada, and I understand that you're doing a test project just outside Toronto, how would it withstand our very cold winters, and in some cases, places where the waters can freeze? Well, we're actually testing that now on a prototype at the University of Waterloo that uh, has been in a pond all winter, um, uh, undergoing freeze-thaw cycles. So, um, uh, so far, so good. Elizabeth, it's a fascinating project. Thanks for joining us this morning to explain more. You're very welcome.